Hi guys, we are ready to work on, this is section four one, so chapter four, section one, if you need to look in your book for some more information. This is the one that we are going to do in class. So if you're watching this video, it would be because you wanted to see it again or you were absent and you need to make up that work. But if you were in class, you do not need to go through this again. We did all of this in class together. Okay, we're going to start with the triangle sum theorem, which says that if you have a triangle, all of the angles, if you rip them off and put them next to each other, they would form a straight line or they would add up to 180 degrees. So the measure of angle one plus the measure of angle two plus the measure of angle three equals 180 degrees. And visually, if we just if we just rip this corner off, ripped him off, then they would line up like this. Here would be one, two, three, and they would form this nice straight line. Okay, let's try it then. So we have a triangle. It's angle or it's triangle MNP. They gave us two of the angles. So this one is 62, this one is 90. What's the third one? You might wanna pull out a calculator for what we're doing today, right? So we would say the total's 180, subtract out the two that we know. So subtract 62, subtract 90. And then if you put that in your calculator, One hundred eighty minus sixty-two minus ninety. Then we know what that last angle. It has to be twenty-eight. So that when you add the three together, if we did twenty-eight plus sixty-two plus ninety, if we're saying those are our three, that should equal one eighty. So you know you've got it right. It equals twenty-eight degrees. So that would be the answer for that one. All right, this next one's a little looks a little more complicated, doesn't it? We actually have angle one, angle two, and angle three that we can figure out with what we already know. Let's start with angle one. Usually they put them in order, so if you start with angle one and move through, usually that's the, the best way. Okay, this is a triangle. When we add these three, the sum should be 180. So let's say, I'm gonna put a squiggle here so I don't get confused. 180 minus 90 minus 58. And let's see, 180 minus, what did we say? 90 minus 58. Oh, what did I do? Oh, there we go. That'll work. It is 32 equals 32. So that was the measure of angle one is 32 degrees. Okay, then one thing you can do is you can say, well, these are vertical angles. Vertical angles are always congruent. And maybe we should just remind ourselves about that. Vertical angles are congruent because you will use that when you solve these little puzzly things. You want to be able to do that. So if angle one is 32 and angle two is a vertical angle, then they are congruent. Measure of angle one is congruent to measure of angle two. So the measure of angle two is also 32 degrees. So those guys match because they're vertical. Then we're on to angle three. I'll put him up here. The measure of angle three equals, so I have this triangle. I know that there's one Angle that's 108. Oh, I should start with 180. Uh, 180 minus 108. And then we know the other one, angle two, we just figured out is 32 because angle one was 32, angle two is 32. So let's subtract that out. And let's see what's left over. 180 minus, we know 108 minus we know 32, that last one has to be 40. So the measure of angle three is 40 degrees. 
and then we can go back and we can check our work. So let's make sure is 108 plus 32 plus 40. Yep, 180. We did it. All right, let's try one more together. This one's a little bit different also. They put an X in there, so they pulled some algebra back at us. Still though, we know that if we add all three of these angles together, it's 180 degrees. So we've got 180, and we know this one's 45. We can subtract that out. And you know what that little box in the corner means, right? That is a right angle. So we can subtract 90. Let's see what's left. 180, take out 45, take out 90. And we have 45 left for this last piece. Now we need to solve for X. So if the last angle is 45 and they're calling it 7X plus 3, Okay, we always do our adding, subtracting parts first, subtract three from both sides, 42 equals seven X, and then we switch to dividing. That's what seven X is, is equal to, but we want one X, so we divide by seven, divide by seven, and X equals six. It's not actually six degrees, X is six, and then if you plugged it back in, and got the total for that angle, that would be the degrees, which we already know is 45, 45 degrees, and then X is six. Okay, look what I got for you. Three for you to try, okay? Solve that, solve that for angle one. You got angle one and a two there, and you've got an X on that one. Pause your video and give it a try. All right, let's check. First one, we had this is 180 degrees, all three added together. Take out the two we know. And there is eight, eight degrees left for that last little guy. Eight degrees. Okay, that's angle one right there. The measure of angle one is eight degrees. Next one, so this guy, let me see. So I'm gonna look at this one first, the bottom one. Actually, no, there's the, I'm gonna go with angle one up there. So here's my triangle. If this is perpendicular, then this is also perpendicular. So we know that those are 90 degrees. Let me do the measure of angle one first. So 180 minus, I'll take out the 90 degrees and then the, other 60 degrees, and that leaves us 30 degrees for angle one. Second triangle, so the measure of angle two, and we'll do the same thing. We're, we're solving for this angle instead of the really pointy one, we're down here. But 180 minus the perpendicular part where we know it's 90, minus, oh look, 30, that's interesting, they match 30, which leaves 60 degrees for angle two. Okay, and then our last one, we've got our X here. That looks like a plus to me. If you read that as a minus, we'll have a different answer, but I'm reading that as a plus. Okay, 180 minus 88 minus 56, and then I'll know how much is left for this last angle. 180 minus 88 minus 56, 36. Okay. So if we take our full 180, pull out those two, 36 is left for this last X plus 41 angle. And that means we need to do some subtracting. X equals, did you get negative five? I think you're right. X is negative five, which doesn't mean the angle's negative. X is negative. But when we plug it in and add 41 to it, then we would get a positive measure for that angle. It would be very, you'd, you'd really be like questioning if you got a negative angle, that's kind of strange. Check something like that, but it's okay if X is negative. Okay, so that's that angle sum, triangle sum theorem.
The next one we want to look at is called the exterior angle theorem. You remember the difference in a theorem and a postulate we talked about in class? Postulate was more just something we accept, but the theorems, there's a proof that you can write out for these. You can look that up if you're interested. <laughs> okay, exterior angle theorem. This one says that if you have a triangle, and we'll extend one side so that there's an exterior. Remember, exterior is like the outside. When you do that, and let's, let's call this angle A, angle B, and then we'll put a little one here. The exterior angle is equal to the sum of the two interior angles that are not connected to it. They call them the remote or the opposite. So we're not going to even talk about how much this is right here, but the outside of it is equal to those two angles on the other side added together. And if you think about that, think about what the, the measures are. Okay, if we look at this, we know that when we add those three angles together, it's 180. So what's left here? is the piece that you would need to add to make this whole inside 180. And that piece would have to be added to the same thing to make this straight line of 180, the same thing as what was left over besides this piece. So it does, it does make sense. It's just kind of a strange thing to come up with that we were like, why, would, why did we, who thought of that? But it's, it is true and it does help us solving on a lot of things. So the measure of angle A plus the measure of angle B, and maybe I should write the A and the B. I'm going to switch those and put them on the inside so that it's really clear what we're talking about. This is angle A. This is angle B. So I'm not talking about anything on the outside of the triangle there. We're talking about the inside measures of those angles equals the measure of angle 1, and he is on the outside. Okay, he's outside, they're both inside. Let's try it so we can see what that looks like. This is exactly the situation we're talking about. Here's angle one, he's exterior, and these are the two interior remote angles, so they're away from him. You wouldn't pick the one right next to him. That's not gonna work. It has to be the two away from him. And so if this is true, the measure of angle one should be equal to 80 plus 60, okay, which is 140 degrees. Yay, and that is correct. That is absolutely true, 140. And what that leaves, if you think about that as if we added these three interior angles together, it would be 180. Those two are 140. That leaves 40 right here for this guy, and then these two form a straight line. So again, we'd say, okay, 180 minus the 40 leaves what for the outside? 140, so it absolutely works. All right, let's do it with an X in it. And then I see that the words here say, you try, they're actually on the back side of the page. That got messed up when I printed it. So ignore that for just a second. We'll get to your, we'll get to your turn, but we'll do this one together. Okay, it says X is here in the, the remote angle, and they told us this exterior, these are the two interior remote. So when we add these two together, it should be the same measure as this one exterior one. So we've got 78 degrees is equal to X plus 55. Those guys should be equal. And then we can solve for x. Subtract that 55. x equals 23. Okay, so you might use it to solve for the exterior angle. You might use it to solve for one of the two interior angles. That can happen. All right, let's turn it over. Remember this says find the measure of 1 and find x. That's what you're going to do at the top of the next page where the directions are not 
not printed in the right spot. I'm sorry. All right, so find, oh, actually, you need to find angle one and angle two, and then over here, find X. Pause your video and give it a try. All right, let's check and see how that went. Measure of angle one is equal to, that's an exterior, so he's equal to the two interiors that don't touch him on the other side, the remote ones, 35 plus 25, which is 60, 60 degrees for angle one. Angle two, so we've got two different ways you could figure out what angle two is. You could use that triangle sum theorem where you say all three of these should add up to 180. Their sum should be 180. Or you could take the straight line here and say these guys are supplementary. I already know what angle one is. So 180 minus that angle one should give me angle two. So either way, you could have solved that. Um, and there's not, a, there's not a wrong way there. Angle two is equal to, I'm going to say 180 minus 60. I'm using the straight line that they're supplementary. And I got 120 degrees for angle two. Okay, let's look at our one over here where we're solving for X. Exterior angle is 145. He should be equal to those two remote interiors added together plus 95. So I'm going to move my 95 first. 2x equals, did you get 50? Divide by two. So x equals 25. It's not a degree. If you multiply it by two, that, that would be 50 degrees, but just x is equal to 25. Okay. All right, let's go on. These are some interesting things that um, makes, make logical sense. Let's see. The acute angles of a right triangle are complementary. Okay, a right triangle. Do you remember what that is? A right triangle means that one of those angles is 90 degrees. 90 degrees right there. Okay, and then our sum, our triangle sum theorem said that if you add the three together, it's 180. So in this triangle, if we subtract out 90, what's left, right? We would say 180 minus that, that right angle leaves us 90 degrees. And do you remember the definition of complementary? Complementary angles their sum is 90 degrees. Since we took out one, the other two together, when you add them, have only 90 degrees left between the two of them. So they have to sum, their, their sum has to be 90. And that is that definition of a complementary angle. So in a right triangle, that is always true. You've taken out 90, you've got 90 left for the other two, they have to be complementary because that's what complementary is. All right, so that's kind of just a logical thing that might help you. The second one, there can be at most one right or obtuse angle in a triangle. So the fat ones that are bigger than 90 or equal to 90, there can only be one of those. And this is actually kind of a fun experiment to do. You can, you can work on that. Let's make this big fatty guy our obtuse angle. So it's the really big, really big one, bigger than 90, is greater than 90 degrees. And we actually could say, because it also said right, we're going to go with it could be equal to 90 degrees. So what that means is we take out 90 or even more from the 180 total that we have, and then there's no way you can have another angle in there that's bigger than 90, right? We saw over here, once you take out a right triangle, there's not enough left there to go bigger than a right triangle when you have to have two angles, You've gotta make two out of that. So same would be over here. If I take out 100 degrees, 
that leaves 80 and I have to get two more, two more angles out of it, there's no way that one of them can be bigger than 90 degrees since 80 is all I've got left. Okay, so that's just another logical thing. If you've got one obtuse angle, the other two can't possibly be obtuse at the same time. They have to be little, little tiny acute angles. So let's write it this way. 180 minus 90 equals 90, which means that our two leftover angles, I'll just call them angle A and angle B. You can call them anything, but I'm just going to say that that those two together have to be less than 90 degrees. Their sum has to be less than 90. No way we can go past that because 180 is all we've got. All right, this is the last thing. We're going to do a couple together, and then I'll, I'll pause and let you finish out this um, snaky guy. So we've got lots of triangles. And we're going to use our triangle sum theorem. We're going to work a little bit with some right triangles. Okay, let's start on this guy. So we've got one triangle here. We know that all together they equal 180. So 180. If we take out the 72, we take out the 68, what's left for that last angle for A? Minus 72, minus 68. That last angle has to be 40. Okay, so we've got that. Let's try, let's do two more together and then we'll pause. I'll pause. Okay, so here's another triangle. This time it's a right angle. So we've got that B right there. What's, a, what's the measure of a right angle? 90. So we already know this is 90. And then if we know that's 90 and that's 36.5, we can find angle C because their sum is 180. So 180, we'll take out the 90, take out the 36.5. Let's see what's left here for our last angle. 53.5, 53.5. You will get you will get a couple decimals on this one. I don't want you to think you messed up. There will be several that have a decimal answer. Okay, I want you to pause your video Go ahead and find the rest of those and then come back and we will check them. All right, let's do it. We've got, here's another triangle with a right angle in it. So I know E was also 90 degrees. To find D, I'll do 180 minus the 90 minus 56. And that is 34 degrees. I didn't put a degrees on my 40. Okay. Let's move to this next one. Okay. Oh, here we've got, so they gave us two measures this time. 180 minus 95 minus 32.1. So this is one where you've got a decimal, right? 59 point, oh, sorry, 52.9, 52.9. Degrees. Let's keep going. This is a right triangle. So G, G is 90 degrees. And then I've got H, oh, look what they did. So that's a right triangle when you put the two together, they equal 90. But just H, he's just part of this triangle. So I can do 180 minus the 30.4 and the 90 degrees, right? And then that means 59.6 for H. Then I've got this one here where they're together, they, they equal 90, 90 for the two. And H is 59.6 plus, so I can find J that way if I subtract, oh, I got right off the thing. If I subtract 59.6 from J, then I know, so I'm subtracting this from both sides, and J equals 30.4, 30.4, 30 
Okay. That was a little tricky. They put two together to make it 90, but we had H, so we can take that out of the 90 and see what's left. Now we need to get I. Here's our triangle. We know 30.5 and J was 30.4. So let's do 180 minus 30.5 and minus 30.4. Oop, and this is actually my I work that I, I wrote it down there. So that leaves 89.9 out of that 180 for I. Okay, then we've got this little guy. 45 and 45 is 90. Okay, so, yep, that leaves 90 for K degrees. Ooh, I'm not putting degrees on any of these. There we go. And then L, we can do 180 minus 33 minus 75. And that leaves us 72 degrees. We'll move on to this one. So M, these are our other two, 180 minus 35.7 minus 37, right? Yes, M is a big one, 107.3. And let's do N, so 180 minus 92.3 minus 40. That leaves 47.7 for N. We're almost done. And here, well, we see P is a 90 degree angle. Then we can do this one, 180 minus 90 minus 54. And that leaves us 36 degrees. Oh, I forgot a few degree signs. Okay, all right, I'm just gonna leave that there for a second. So you can check and make sure you got them all perfect. That is massive intense practice on the triangle sum theorem and a little bit with right angles, the 90 degree angles. All right, so you guys can go ahead and get started on the assignment that goes with this. Um, it will say at the top 4.1, or say geometry assignment 4.1. These were the notes. The other one is the assignment. Make sure you get it done and bring it to class next time to get all the points. I'll see you then.